but okay. So this is being recorded. Uh, it's important to, to uh, state it first. If you uh, don't like the idea, don't want your voice or your pictures to be captured in this video, uh, please leave. Otherwise, you'll be able to enjoy uh, <laughs> the next hour about or less, depending on uh, participation of our uh, guests from home. But uh, welcome uh, to all of you uh, to uh, Data Talks. Uh, for the ones of you who did not see the previous uh, instances of this kind of series we are running, it's an um, experiment from, from a joint of two different projects, uh, the TR, the European Data Portal, and the Support Center for Data Sharing. Uh, both are initiatives by uh, the European Commission. The first one, a more, uh, let's say, uh, more traditionally related to the uh, space of open data and have been running for many years now, or almost six. And the other one, the Support Center for Data Sharing, uh, a new addition uh, to the uh, portfolio of services that the Commission runs uh, for its citizens trying to promote, in this case, uh, data sharing in general. So not only from government to its citizens, but between companies, organizations, and also government in this case. The idea for uh, the data talks and the reason we are here is that we believe that a lot of the momentum and the successes we owe, uh, we owe to the people who actually make uh, open data and data sharing possible uh, in Europe. And uh, today, particularly talk, starting from the open data world, I thought I went back to my personal Rolodex and I said, well, let's invite three heroes of the Italian open data space. There are the three ladies you see in video, uh, Francesca, Maria Claudia, and uh, Georgia. Um, would you like to introduce yourselves? And, and then perhaps we will talk about, because you're heroes, we will talk about your origin stories as well. <laughs> in, in, um, what about uh, Georgia? Uh, let's start from you. Yeah, hi, good morning to everybody. Um, well, uh, uh, how to present myself. I'm a consultant uh, currently of the Italian Digital Agency uh, mm, and I work in the context of open data since uh, many years, more or less uh, nine, even probably more, um, nine years. And um, well, my career is uh, is, is uh, not only in the public sector, but I also used to work in the university and research community sector uh, because um, I've been for some time uh, um, a research assistant uh, at different universities, both uh, in Bologna, in Italy and in Rome. And then I moved to this uh, public sector uh, environment uh, um, and uh, starting there to work with uh, open data. So, and now I'm uh, I'm working specifically on developing ontologies and um, we are try to foster the link at the open data paradigm in the public sector. Thank you, Georgia. Francesca. Hi, everyone. Actually. Uh, I am I'm a researcher, but I'm not an academic. I don't want to define myself as an academic. So I don't have a linear path. So I started, um, yes, in the teen years of the 2000s uh, to investigate on how some institutions were releasing data on uh, um, development projects. So I'm a social scientist, uh, scientist with a PhD in sociology, and uh, I was really interested since the beginning um, at the effects of technology uh, in the society and uh, the power dynamics behind it, actually. So as a sociologist. So my first contact with open data was during my doctoral studies, where I was um, studying the strategy of the World Bank and the development gate gateway portal, which was the first um, primary entry point to knowledge and data on, uh, on projects funded by the World Bank. And it was a very important turning point, I think, in the open data world. We are talking about 2003. And then, uh, of course, I, I kept this 
passion for the knowledge sharing and I, I started to be part uh, of this community after being out for some years uh, of the academic community and due to my close encounters with hackers I, I started to, um, to study uh, how data are released, published and of course collecting evidence on the reuse of uh, open data. Uh, thank you, Francesca. So we touched on the technologies, Georgia, this uh, social researcher, and, but not an academic. And, and then we go to Maria Claudia. What about you? Hi, everybody. I hope you hear me well. Yeah, my name is Maria Claudia Bodino. I, I'm currently working for the Italian Digital Transformation Team. But uh, basically, I worked for a lot of years in the private sector before. I graduated in uh, computer science from the Polytechnic of Turin. And then I, I started my, let's say, my career working for some ICT company like Motorola and Avira. And then I decided to come back to Italy and uh, to switch between, uh, to, let's say, from the private sector to the public one. And uh, I had this opportunity to join the digital transformation team. I'm really interested about these topics. Now we are trying to, let's say, to, to face in Italy. And basically, we are trying to define a digital strategy for the country. We work together with Georgia on different projects about uh, open data, but not just about open data. We are, so, we are also involved in a lot of uh, activities uh, with the, the different ministry and the different department in order to improve the interoperability between the different, uh, uh, let's say, uh, base registry we have in Italy. And uh, also I'm currently in, uh, enrolled in a Master of Science in Public Sector Innovation because I, I love to integrate my knowledge that is pretty technical with something more from the policy and uh, let's say social science aspect. Uh, yeah, basically that's all. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, as we said, as every hero has an origin story, uh, I'm, I'm curious to know what, um, what was your specific idea, your, perhaps your first contact with open data and, and how it, it de developed from there. And for some of you is many years back in the past, like, like in my case, so that, that also makes me curious and possibly that is why we know each other for, for such a long time. Um, so Spider-Man was bit by the, the spider, right? So what, what bit you? <laughs> Maria Claudia, sorry, start with from you. Oh. Uh, oh, you're on mute now. So you hear me? Yes. Basically, I, I spent some years uh, living uh, outside Italy, in Germany, and sometimes in US. And uh, when I decided to, to came back, I was really impressed by the fact that Italy is not so bad. Uh, as you, you usually you think when you are in Italy. And so I decided to leave the, the company in which I was working for, that was a very good one. And they say, oh, maybe I can, I can use a little bit of my knowledge uh, in improving my country. And uh, at that moment, there was this very good opportunity for the digital team uh, with uh, Diego Piacentini, you know, you know, the vice CEO manager from Amazon. And I decided to apply. But before that, uh, I spent some... Uh, basically one year and a half working for a, a, a NGO that was trying to foster transparency and uh, to, to face corruption in Italy. And also one project in which we were involved that I'm really proud was the, let's say the, the petition in order to ask the introduction of the Freedom of Information Act in Italy. So this was a really good goal, even if today is not used as it will be, it is used in other country. But basically, this was a really good input for me to start to uh, discover something more about open data. And then a day, I, 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 I saw like uh, the conference, the IO uh, International Open Data Conference in Madrid. And I decided to, to buy a, yeah, basically a ticket and I, I went there. And this was the, the, the place where I met uh, uh, Maurizio, I met you and Francesca. And probably this was the good input that I found and then I decided to, to go deeply on this topic. 
for that is uh, the first time the Avengers assembled somewhere by, by chance. Uh, 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 Georgia, what about what about you? What what beat you? Well, uh, as I said before, um, I started uh, looking at the open data. Well, to be honest, um, I didn't touch open, day, open data at that time, but when I was working at the University of Rome, I was working in a project of cybersecurity project. Okay, so I'm uh, also a, a woman in, uh, in security, at least in my past. Um, and the, one of the main concepts uh, that were they developed was that sharing knowledge with many actors about uh, cyber possible cyber attacks can help to prevent them or at least uh, to uh, act in advance in order to mitigate the damage and that was the starting point from my career let me say with data and uh, the idea that sharing knowledge uh, it's powerful because allow us to you know put together many uh, knowledge around the world uh, to to fight something in that case it was to fight uh, obviously cyber attacks then when i moved to the public sector uh, to the italian digital agency that was called in a different way at that time it was 2011 if i remember correctly um, then one of the first tasks uh, they assigned me was to um, investigate, oh, no, well, to manage a project to uh, create open data um, for a specific base register of uh, the Italian public sector, which is uh, the registry of uh, uh, Italian public organization, we call it uh, IPA, Indice Pubblica Amministrazione. They, they are all the list of the public administrations registered in Italy. And they said, okay, so we want to do the best open data we can. So we want to investigate the five stars because we don't want, you know, three, uh, three stars or, or even less. Uh, and so I started by myself studying studying a lot. I, I read a lot of things, um, pa scientific papers, because I, well, th that was my, you know, mood, because I was coming from the university, so the first thing that you do is to uh, study scientific papers. And then I studied a lot, uh, also in blog posts, uh, coming from other governments, uh, like US and UK governments because at that time they were quite um, um, advanced, uh, let me say, in open data, and they were doing a very nice thing to probably replicate also in other contexts, like the Italian one. And then I studied a lot from our communities. Um, this is my outing, let me say, because I, I studied a lot, probably they don't know, uh, reading posts from a community that uh, was developed in Italy, which uh, was, uh, was because now, it, well, probably, it still exists, but uh, I'm not sure the, the status of the is spaghetti open data. I read a lot of their posts. The, 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 I, I never registered to that, uh, that community and their mailing list, but I read a lot of their point of view, was, uh, you know, because the, there were the point of views of both the civil servants and the society, the civic hackers. And that uh, allowed me to understand the issues uh, um, to, to be faced when opening data, you know? And uh, then my knowledge grew, the grow, then I participated in some G8, there was a G8 in London, if I remember correctly, where there was a specific focus on the open data, and that was the first time of G8 discussing about like an open data charter uh, to be uh, implemented in, uh, in, the, in the different states. Uh, and I participated in a technical working group of that, and then I continued this work till now, that now I moved more on the standardization of the semantic integrity ontologies. So it's ready this to This is more or less my origin and uh, till now. Well, it feels like a lot already. So the, it, and it's already two different, very, two very different stories. So one, uh, Maria Claudia coming from industry, uh, getting enlightened perhaps at some point, wanted to do more for uh, society through data. Uh, Georgia coming from the academic world, but also complementing what you learned there 
with the early communities and Spaghetti Open Data, of course, that uh, I followed at the time, but I was already abroad, I believe, um, coming together and learning in parallel from the academic perspective of what Open Data meant at the time and the experience of the practitioners, uh, both in activism and in government. So this, these two words that sometimes do not overlap, sometimes are very actually strong together. And, um, and Francesca, you, you name already perhaps a little of, of your component. It was a, it started with the social research and your interest in the power dynamics, you call them. Is, is that correct? Yes, um, I said power dynamics. I mean, there is power dynamics uh, behind open data. So uh, this is very interesting and I would talk slightly about it uh, later. But I just want to say that my uh, first uh, encounter with this global open data community was in 2000 and I think 11, not with open data as, as, as a topic actually, but with people that were uh, doing something to, for opening up data. And it was, uh, I was living abroad because uh, I was in Germany and it was summer, I was in Spain on holiday and then came this invitation from a, a dear friend of mine. Uh, she's in the Fab Lab world, she's a maker. And she was uh, inviting me to come to the um, Open, Open Knowledge uh, Festival in Helsinki in 2011. Um, so I was a bit skeptical, but just because I was on holiday. But then in, in like 20 minutes, it was okay, I'm coming. I, I, I have found a flight, I'm going uh, to Helsinki through, through Copenhagen. And then I, um, I, I was ready to, to join this event, which was, I mean, uh, one of the best event after a lot of academic conferences I was attending in those years. And when I was there, I was tweeting a lot and I was going to all the workshops and events. And uh, during this uh, Hans Rosling lecture, who was the main speaker, I mean, the keynote speaker, um, yes, uh, someone from the Italian Open Data group present at the conference uh, was just um, uh, sending me a message saying, hi, I, you are one of the few Italians here, so why we don't met, meet? And so I, I met uh, these, uh, these civic hackers coming from that uh, community that Georgia was uh, mentioning before, Spaghetti Open Data. Since I was open, uh, abroad, I was living abroad, I was not following uh, actually this, uh, um, this, this activity in Italy. I was more informed about the, the global movement, the global community in those years. So uh, that was the, um, the first time, I mean, the very first time. Uh, then uh, after some months, I was offered this um, opportunity, this job in Trento, and I go, went back to, to Italy, uh, working um, closely with the local government uh, for the launch of this uh, regional uh, open data catalog. And uh, after one year, uh, I was more focusing on citizen engagement. Uh, and, uh, you know, in, the, in those, in those years, the, the, yes, there was also this uh, hype. Yes, not on the five stars of Tim Berners-Lee, but uh, <laughs> the five stars of Tim Davis, uh, looking at the importance of how to engage citizens in the, um, of course, uh, how to, to convince them uh, to use data for civic purposes and uh, so I was focusing on that in this uh, initiative, this local government initiative. Can I interrupt you there Francesca? There's something that is quite strong in what, in what all of you are saying, that it, at least a pattern that comes out, how strongly related people working in open data sometimes seem to be around um, shared motivation and shared points in time and location sometimes. So the open knowledge uh, festival in Helsinki and the one the year after, two years after in Berlin uh, are in the history of a lot of us. Uh, the, the IODC in Madrid, same. 
and the the networks are, are, this is not just a story of the italian component of it the it, it's very typical of at least of most of the people i know working in open data today that they reinforce their personal motivation with these kind of networks that run deep um, uh, across countries and 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 sectors and 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 jobs and, and and different points in time, and 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 that, I didn't want to interrupt you, but the I wanted to start moving towards the situation in Italy. So because of course you you contribute to uh, progress of of this world, and let's not call it open data only at this point. Perhaps we call it uh, data sharing in general, uh, and with a focus on government perhaps in the past and now extending. Uh, what would you say are from an Italian perspective? Um, the biggest challenge you've been through or you helped overcoming uh, or what are the ones that are coming that you will still need to do a lot of work for? <laughs> I see Georgia looking at the sky asking for help for the, for the heavens. Um, uh, would you like to go first, Francesca? Me? Uh, ah, Francesca, okay, sorry. So are you um, asking about um, open data in Italy and the situation in Italy? or my experience in open data in Italy related to my work? Let's make it useful for, for our audience. So let's say one challenge that you had in the past that you solved or helped solving and how, <laughs> and perhaps okay. one that is in front of you that you still need to deal with. And the same question applies to the yeah, other. Yeah, my I mean, personal experience, uh, and I was, I was driving my, my work uh, actually in, in the um, since 2013 when I was back in Italy and working in open data was to try to collect evidence on the reuse of uh, open data. So um, doing it systematically, I started this project called Open Data 200 with uh, Fondazione Bruno Kessler and the Governance Lab. We tried to uh, map um, the enterprises that are reusing open data for commercial purposes. We, I didn't find any, any study or data on the reuse of data that were consistent. So my uh, questions and my point was, why don't we do that? Because we need, we need it to, I mean, we need to talk about the benefits of open data, but we need also to talk about the costs. And if we want to do this analysis, we need to more evidence on the reuse, of course. And this is a circle. So a virtuous circle <laughs> sometimes, and a vicious circle so in other, on the other hand. Would you say uh, it's still a challenge today? Oh, we it are. is, it is, it is, and uh, my project is, um, that project is ended now, but has ended, but now I'm involved in other projects that are using the, the methodology, and we are trying to um, evolve it, and uh, you know better than me, <laughs> because of your work, how hard is it? So, um, but we are still uh, on the way. I mean, it's, uh, we, we have a lot of uh, steps uh, in front of us to do and to make, and, um, but it's not just this, the challenge, I think. When I was talking about power dynamics, I was talking about uh, processes, I was talking about open data not treated as um, a topic in itself, a policy, an autonomous policy, it's part of a process. So it's something that uh, has to be become a part of, um, uh, I mean, uh, not a philosophy, but uh, uh, it has to be the, the, a normal, uh, a part of a normal path of an organization, of a, pub, of a public sector organization, of course. So it is not yet so. We, we, we are still fighting that battle, you say. We... No, it, it, it's not yet so. And uh, of course, uh, um, the administrative uh, uh, configuration, <laughs> I don't know how to say, the multi-level governance, I mean, in Italy, is very complex. And this is part of the problem. So um, as a um, former political social scientist, uh, uh, in, in theory, actually, we, we study a lot uh, of these uh, mechanisms in theory. Then in practice, is, is, really, uh, is really a daedalus. I mean, it's a labyrinth. It's very, very um, connected to, 
to, um, to personal interest and not public interest as you know now we we are shifting to public interest tech technology is the new mantra public interest so, technology wow so i saw a lot of private interest in the public sector and a lot of um, i mean um, public interest also in the private sector and this is uh, something that uh, has to be balanced uh in the in these days okay and, and and yeah. because you named governments, the natural thing to do then is going to <laughs> Maria Claudia. So uh, pick one again, one challenge from your from your past in open data, and and perhaps develop the point Francesca made. Do you you are closer to government today? Do you do you see what she is describing? Uh, are you fighting the good fight, uh, and are you winning? Yeah, let's say that I'm facing this issue probably every day in my job. And uh, I think that Italy is pretty far away from a, a data-driven public sector, not by now. But at the same time, we have in the future some very good opportunity. For example, the Open Data Directive, which I'm working on, and also the, the, the three-year plan for the, let's say, public sector information uh, with Georgia. Also, we are working on this together. But at the same time, Speaking from a geographical point of view, you can see in Italy different level of, uh, let's say, expertise no, about open data. If you look to the re regional level, you have good experiences and also good projects. But if you look uh, more locally to the municipality level, to the province level, unfortunately, there are a lot of small initiatives that are not uh, aligned with the national data strategy. So the risk is that these initiatives are some very often, they are very good, but they are not uh, well known. And so they are not reused. That basically is the main principle behind open data. At the same time, if you want to have a look more at the uh, highest level, for example, look into the ministry and to the different uh, central local administration, sorry, central administration, it's pretty clear that uh, it's not so easy a, co a data collaboration, let's say. We have, uh, the, the, now we are trying to, from some months we are working on a task force on data based on, on open data, but not just open data, no? For, uh, for uh, we are trying to give some, uh, uh, to, to the policy makers some good data in order to deliver good policy. And this is pretty challenging. Uh, probably there is a lack of, uh, I think, of skills, of data skill. And uh, in my opinion, this is something in which we have to invest a lot in the next, in the next, in the future, basically. Because probably sometimes it's not because the public administration don't want to do, or to publish data, but they don't know how to do it, probably, or they don't know the, 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 pow the power and the potential for the country of this action. And uh, also sometimes, it's not good to say, but it's like that, it's the reality, they don't want to share the data because data is power and probably it's not so easy, even if you're talking about open data, they prefer to deliver the data in PDF or uh, in dashboard, but not uh, the raw data. And uh, let's see, I think we have a lot of uh, activity to do, so this is a good point. And you name, you name the skills. Is it a matter of having more data scientists in civil, serv in civil service or even just people who understand data to some degree, what, what I would personally call literacy? Yeah, I would say that uh, it's good. Also, from my experience in these past years, I work on different projects. But if you are not together with a domain expert, you can, you can be the best team uh, of data scientists in the world, but if you are, if you are not uh, working together with some domain expert, probably your analysis will not be very useful. So I think it's very important to put different skills together, but at least everybody has to have a minimal level of skill about data culture. And also one of our suggestions is to, uh, to introduce in the public administration a data team, where you have a data analyst and data scientist together. And I hope young people, because usually these are more uh, powerful and uh, energized than the other one. And this is another problem from the, from let's say the public servant in Italy. 
they are not so young, you know, we know. So this means that sometimes they are not so flexible in order to acquire new knowledge. And this can be a, sometimes a barrier. Okay, so it's a matter of attitude. Uh, I, would, I, would, I would not talk, call it age, but perhaps the attitude that comes with age sometimes, unfortunately, being a bit more rigid in, in the kind of knowledge you have already, uh, feeling a bit entitled perhaps coming from that kind of experience rather than still available to learn and understand that there are new things around you. They also maybe sometimes are scared because they don't, uh, they didn't have the opportunities to to touch with the with their hands that uh, data collaboratives is good for everybody, and at the end it's good to share knowledge and not to keep everything for yourself in silos. But you know we are lucky because we have this experience. Some maybe some people didn't experience this. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you, Mercadia. And and Georgia, you've been fighting this fight more from the technology side, right? So. Uh, what challenges, or give, give me one challenge you've been involved in that perhaps is still on your plate and you need to, to fight hard for? Well, I simply can say, well, I can say this. Uh, my first work in this, uh, um, um, I mean, my first document, official document coming from, let me say, government agency was entitled semantic interoperability through linked open data okay uh, this is the challenge and i still fight for it because uh, uh, what we claimed in that document and uh, by the way we were a group of uh, many different administrations i liked a lot of that experience because uh, uh, i learned a lot from uh, local public administration cent central public administration involved in that group um, they, we all agreed at that time that that paradigm could be really the chance to uh, foster and implement real interoperability, in, the, in that case semantic interoperability, and uh, finally have these uh, uh, databases of the public administration uh, interchanging data with each other, okay? I still fight a lot, a lot for that. Uh, because uh, I am the girl uh, in the public sector that does uh, complicated things, for example, okay? Because when you have to come and say, look, we need to, to, to create together a common data model, for example, because if you want to take uh, uh, all the data coming from all the different public administrations, San Francesca and Maria Claudia explained the complexity that we have in our country, if everybody uh, also structure the data as they wish, okay, it's very difficult to, 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 for a data scientist, for example, to take all this data and uh, do an, an analysis of a phenomenon at the national scale. Yeah. You should start to reason about uh, having common standards and using common standards, common uh, interoperability profiles, let me say, so that uh, actually when uh, we exchange data, we can understand um, and preserve the meaning of the data in this exchange. This is something that I still need to, uh, to I mean, to try to find a way to uh, explain people the added value. Um, why, why do you think we, have, we still need to fight this? What, what, what is it that this does not, why doesn't the message get through? What, what is it that we're missing there? I think there are many reasons why people are not doing that. Uh, um, first of all, I think it, there is a reason of the fact that uh, we need to deal with the very old systems, okay? From a technological point of view. Technology systems. In the public administration sector, you have, you have public administration using systems that are old and probably they are coming from different uh, amendments uh, they, they added to the system over the time, you know? So stratification of uh, software development uh, over the time. And this complicate things because they say, okay, we have this system, we have this data, I cannot uh, uh, change everything. And then they say, if something works, why should I change it? Okay, uh, and so th this is the first, uh, uh, obviously, impact. The other impact is that, uh, well, I agree with Maria Claudia, we miss uh, skills uh, and we miss uh, um, the culture of thinking to the system with data in the center. Okay, they, they construct 
system and then uh, they say, okay, uh, now I release some data. No, we need to start from the data, reason about the data and then construct all the systems surrounding that. And this is something uh, that requires a change in culture. Um, I think, I believe that we are, as Maria Claudia said, we are still far away from that, at least in our country. But looking at other countries' experience, I'm not sure that <laughs> Uh, there is a so um, uh, nice place uh, out there. I saw with the COVID the data sets, for example. I read just an article coming from the US saying that all the data are closed within PDF and dashboards, as it is in Italy. We, we must say that, okay. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, the main challenge that uh, I am facing. And uh, these are, so they are, the limitation from a technical point of view, but basically also the limitation comes from what Francesca was saying before. There is a process behind it. Yeah. And if you want to change completely the paradigm, you need to change the process. That should be aligned with the new world, okay? And this is something very difficult to obtain. Yeah. It requires years, years and years. And I like the way you framed it, because, and, and coming from a technologist like you, because we uh, sometimes we we techies tend to see everything like, uh, I mean, you just need a system or deliver a new piece of software, piece of hardware and so on. This is not really the case. I mean, we are the first to understand this as a matter of process. The systems are the service of those processes. Absolutely. Seeing data as an asset, not as a, as a file on, on a hard disk of, of someone. Yeah. Uh, and, and yeah, we are all still fighting this fight. To, to close the first part of, of this uh, session in which um, you are the center of, of, of let's say, on, on the plate that we offer our audience, uh, I wanted to ask you the, one last round related to uh, data sharing in general, not just open. Uh, if you had the opportunity to, I'm saying this also for the audience at home, to check the uh, latest data strategy from the European Commission, they've opened the space a lot talking about data sharing in general beyond, beyond open the concept of data spaces and so on. And this is when data may not necessarily be available to be open, whether it is confidential or includes data about individuals and so on. Do you think this is um, the way to go? Do you think you, do, do, there is space and opportunities for data sharing in general? Or are you a skeptic? What do you think about this? Uh, starting from uh, Maria Claudia, perhaps. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I, I think it's a really good opportunity. To, to foster public-private partnership, PPV, uh, because it's, uh, as the data European data strategy mentioned, but it's really important, and we have the evidence today. Think about just the COVID-19 pandemic and think about the mobility data. Everybody's asking for the mobility data to understand better how people is going around, and that these data are not, yeah, they are not public, but they are even not from the, the state. So it's important to integrate this knowledge together. And also, for, the, for example, we need the data from the utilities, for example. We need data in order to understand the energy uh, consumption of a country in this period, to understand where people in, is moving and from, from the point, from A to B. And so in my opinion, this is pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, I don't know which are the best tool from a, a policy uh, point of view in order to, uh, to, 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 let's say, to improve this sharing of data because today is not so easy. For example, I had some uh, experience. They are, more, uh, they are most related to the local context, but in some cities in Italy, you have the, you have the data, for example, for the transport, transportation, layer that are from a public company but in somehow it's a private company so the 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 city hall is not allowed to give to have and to access to this data so this is pretty important to to try to clear the framework around and to avoid every misunderstanding sure yeah this is the classic problem of data being imprisoned, let's say, in the hands of suppliers to government. Uh, yeah. Because uh, maybe you have some agreement that they were signed some years ago, and uh, there was needs, take, let's say, the, the legal interoperability was not so clear, and so you are not allowed to ask them the data of your city. So this is unbelievable, no? But it's like that. Yeah, thank you. 
uh, although this perhaps will be solved by the upcoming uh, public open data and public sector directive uh, with the requirement. Yeah, hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed. We will talk about this next summer, okay? <laughs> yes. <laughs> After we see it. Uh, Georgia, uh, what about interoperability between private and public sector? If it is a challenge in public, will it be, will it be a challenge also in uh, data sharing in general? Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, well, I, th I think it is actually a challenge of that. But I think it's uh, in 2020 mandatory. So we need, uh, um, once again, uh, from my experience, uh, I start working with the, all these kind of things in the context of the Italian interoperability framework that was called at the time now is uh, probably is dead, uh, which is called the SPC. Um, it's an acronym for uh, Sistema Pubblico di Connettività, which was our interoperability framework. And it basically was based only for, for public administrations. You know, you, you share the data only for public administrations. And then, and there was a, like a complex uh, uh, interoperability model where you had the specific protocols uh, to implement and specific uh, elements to um, uh, deploy in, in the public sector, okay? And the, some public administration did that. But then uh, they, they said to us, okay, but then when I come to, for example, interact with the private sector for a payment, for example, okay, how can I impose a private sector to use my protocol that I have to use only within the public sector? Okay, so now in Italy we have this, uh, we changed uh, slightly this model because we are going to a different interoperability model which is more open with the base, um, let me say, on APIs and very general term of APIs. And so probably there is also this. Uh, um, availability to open to, to the private sector. I believe it is absolutely necessary to share data um, and uh, I believe it is very necessary. I tell you even today because I read this morning something that I didn't like in my country, there is still confusion between open data, shared data and public data. We need to clarify the things from my point of view and we need to foster all, all of that. Okay, because we need to share data, even personal data, uh, between the public administrations. I have many uh, stories from the public sector of public administration struggling in obtaining data from another public administration, or oh, they have to pay. A public administration have to pay to have a data from another one because they have to do an institutional task. It's amazing, you know, but it happens. So we really need to uh, foster all these uh, um, important principles. And I like the point you made about uh, perhaps helping interoperability by using open standards Absolutely. rather than impose from one side arbitrarily. I mean, sounds obvious perhaps to us because we've been doing this for so long, but perhaps for others it's not. And even a strong government today perhaps does not have the strength uh, the soft power to impose a standard. So the only way perhaps to work with private is to actually work together uh, collaboratively. Yeah. And, and Francesca, uh, last but not least, uh, so from the researcher pros, pros, uh, point of view and the, and the dynamics of it, what do you see for data sharing coming beyond open data? Yes, I was um, thinking of the European data strategy a lot uh, since it was released uh, and uh, in January, I think, or in February. And uh, I was reading it in this geopolitical, uh, I mean, using this geopolitical key, uh, <laughs> because uh, of course, Europe wants to be um, a player, actually. Uh, a political player with more political um, weight uh, in, the, in the global, uh, of course, um, world of uh, big decks. And uh, this is, of course, uh, that document, in, um, it's very relevant for this reason. So in my point of view, then, of course, um, the, the question about the data collaboratives, which, is, uh, which has been discussed over the years, and now it's, uh, let's say, it's, it's been inst institutionalized. This is another important uh, point. So um, the problem is the implementation. 
So how to, um, to really realize this, uh, how to say, uh, data philanthropy, <laughs> I don't know, this uh, release of private data for uh, uh, public interest. So uh, this, is, this, is very, uh, this is very problematic. This will be hard, difficult. I can't talk about the Open Data Directive because I'm working on the high value data sets. So I'm in the team, so I can't say more. But um, this, is, this is part, uh, of course, of the, the mindset who is researching um, these new um, data spaces. And, uh, and I, I'm quite concerned, but aware. And uh, this, I can say opt, op, optimist. I'm optimistic, but, and, but with, I mean, moderation. <laughs> yes, with moderation. That, that's a nice word that describes Italians in general. Optimist with moderation. And I want to say uh, more uh, that um, this uh, government to government, uh, I mean, communication, uh, non communication, sorry, mentioned it by Georgia, it doesn't happen according to my uh, I mean, study and analysis, recent analysis. It doesn't happen just in Italy. It's really um, very uh, common, yeah. Common, yes. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure that many of the all partners, around Europe, all around Europe. Oh, absolutely, I'm sure many of the patterns you described today happen across Europe. Um, uh, um, federal states, I understand, they have a, a, even a further layer of complication because different states or regions in the same country may not have seamless way of transfer data from one to the other. So, a lot of us are still fighting that battle, and it's not just Italy. Um, so that's uh, all from, from my side for now, and thank you again for, for being with us. I would uh, save some time for questions from the audience, if it is specific uh, to our three guests today. And I see in chat there is one for us at the European Data Portal in particular, that if you don't mind, Magnus, I will keep uh, towards the end, after questions for uh, Francesca, Maria Claudia and Chiara. So if you have questions for our guests, uh, Think about it. If you are shy, write them down in chat or Luigi. otherwise. But... Luigi has raised his hand with a question. Oh, hey, Luigi. Uh, welcome. Go on. Hi again. Uh, I have, a, I have a, a quite, a, quite an obvious question for, for the three uh, women in this panel. Um, since um, you, you talked a lot about data uh, is power, the data is power, the, about silos, uh, about this uh, administrative culture of keeping the data and using them as a as a tool for you know um, their career or um, to 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 use as as a tool of power. And you as you know as 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 women, uh, do, do you think that having more women in key uh, uh, roles in public administrations or elsewhere uh, will you know? help uh, to be more collaborative to uh, uh, to 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 overcome to to try to do something to uh, yeah to to improve this uh, this widespread culture in, in in government at least at least in Italy this is something that I can see thanks Luigi I have a feeling Francesca has an opinion on this um, regarding Italy yes sure um, we have a lot of talented wom women and uh, busy with uh, their jobs and of course uh, trying to, to emerge and uh, they, need a they need more opportunities. But I have to say uh, also that we need the right woman. Uh, it's not just a matter of uh, quote rosa. Um, sorry, I, I don't know how to say the in English. Positive discrimination uh, for women. Positive discrimination, sorry. Uh, but we need to um, give, uh, let's say, value uh, to, to the right and talented women that are now not, in, uh, not leaders and can, be, and can be leaders. Sorry for, for it. it's banal, but it's very, uh, yes, it's, it's not it's banal. Crucial. It's crucial. <laughs> no uh, yeah. Georgia, Marika, do you want to add anything on this? And then we have another question from the chat. Well, to be honest, I know many women in the public sector 
and they are very silent behind the, the scenes, you know. Um, they don't even participate in public events. Uh, typically, you see men, you know. And this is uh, something that is happening very often, even recently. Uh, and I think that, uh, um, and they fight, they, they fight a lot, okay. Uh, because I know, uh, I know some of them fighting a lot uh, to remove some culture, very old culture, okay, and jealousies and so on. And I think that uh, if they start having a uh, higher level in the hierarchy positions, probably thing, some of the things may, may change because uh, women has uh, some kind of approach uh, sometimes that can help. But uh, as uh, Francesca said, uh, from my point of view, there should be uh, the skills, okay? It's not only a matter of gender. Uh, there should be, uh, you know, the right uh, women with skills, uh, capable of understanding the problems and facing even difficult problems and complex problems. And that, that's uh, the main point, okay? It happens also with men because I, I know many civil servants, men civil servants that are abs absolutely amazing and they did many things of, uh, and innovated a lot of uh, um, pieces of uh, public administrations. But yeah, probably some, uh, you know, higher, a uh, high, higher level position for women, why not? Okay, it's the time, let me say. So Luigi starts planning for retirement, so we could make room. Um, no, <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Maria Claudia, do you want to add anything or we go for the next question? Well, I, I think that it's not a matter of uh, gender, but most of mindset and uh, also uh, skills. So you can also put a very powerful and a very good uh, woman at the top, but if you around don't have a good ecosystem, the effects are basically zero. So you need to, to, to build an ecosystem around. And also, in my experience from when I was a student at the Polytechnic, I, I'm, I'm used to stay in, in let's say, a uh, team where men are more uh, than women. I didn't face many problems by now, it depends. I think it's not gen it's not something not generic, you can say. But if something doesn't work like right now, maybe it's good to change something and we can start from this variable. Yeah. <laughs> be a good idea. Thanks, Mike. Uh, I see a question from Esther Huya that, that works uh, in our team uh, on, on the support center for the shared side. Uh, she leads the project for us. She asks, uh, probably this is for Francesca. Uh, it seems we uh, still face similar challenges than many years ago, as an example around how to measure the impact of open data. Are we making progress and could we be faster, maybe collaborating more? What do you think, Francesca, as a research? Yes, um, actually, I think that uh, we have to collaborate more because um, we need to share uh, all the data we have collected because sometimes at national level I, I was I was studying all the all the literature actually on the impact uh, and all the um, all papers and uh, of course data uh, that are not available I have to say um, so we actually we should do a task force on that <laughs> so that, that that would be really interesting but also i think that we we have to advance this kind of approach uh, and we need more uh, a computational approach uh, of course we need also to use private data to do that and this is not possible i was trying to 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 use uh, actually uh, other sources um, not just interviews or surveys or uh, this, uh, of course, uh, um, quantitative uh, information comes also from, uh, for example, LinkedIn data, um, other kind of data that are, that are not public. So this is uh, important that could be like a challenge and a new effort for who is researching um, open data impact. And, so, and you talk about computational. What, what what are you referring to? Because I have an idea, but I don't know if. Yeah, I, I, I was just uh, referring to the fact that we need um, to to have uh, um, analysts, data analysts that are not just working with social okay. social scientists, and of course try um, able to manage uh, big. 
um, I don't want to use the, 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 the word big data, uh, but of course try to, um, to uh, analyze uh, big uh, amounts of data coming from, I was citing the example of LinkedIn, for example, but they are closed. So. Uh -uh. so in a way, going beyond the limitations that are, let's say, in running a survey or the yes. sample will yes. be too yes. small. This not, is not enough. Not this enough. is not enough. This is important for uh, advancing the, the, the debate on the measurement. Yeah, but that's a bit of a contradiction in terms. And again, we cannot talk too much about this because of timing, but open data being open data, we cannot ask people to register to download it. We cannot ask people to get a license uh, nominally. So uh, it's uh, one of our historical issues, right, in this, in this space. Perhaps you need to change something there or be, or, uh, in a way. Yeah, oh, yes, yes. It's a trade off, yes. right? So, uh, yes, in my, in, my, in, yeah, in my recent proze project, uh, I was uh, interviewing an entrepreneur and it, it was saying exactly what you are saying right now. Why don't you ask logs to data providers? Why, don't, why these logs are not public about who is uh, downloading who, or reusing, yeah. using, reusing uh, data? And this is an issue that maybe can be submitted to, to, the, to the ministry, maybe, uh, to the ministry. I don't know. That would, uh, that would start up the, to open a kind of worms, because I'm sure that the one of us who are, uh, with, still wear the activist hat on and uh, may simply be contrary to adding any element of friction to reuse, uh, like registration may be for some. So it's a, it's a difficult topic, perhaps for another time. So before saying goodbye, I invite uh, Magnus, who put two very good questions for the ADP side of the team, uh, to write us on the uh, support forum that we have in the, on the website. Uh, we can uh, give you a good idea of what the answer is to, to those two points that, that you make. And uh, for, again, for the other three guests, uh, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, I, I look forward to meet you again in other circumstances, perhaps. Uh, keep up with the good work and, and keep being our models uh, for, for pushing across all directions possible uh, data sharing and open data uh, in Italy. Thank you again for, for your work and thank you for everybody who has been um, following our um, session today. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Grazie. Bye-bye. Ciao.